In this presentation, I'm going to demonstrate that the modern theory of evolution, as is propagated today, is not a legitimate scientific proposal. And this is because the theory of evolution has been universally shielded from scientific falsification. Dr. Karl Popper, who is one of the most distinguished philosophers of science of the 20th century, stated that in order for a theory to be considered scientific, it had to be falsifiable. In other words, there had to be a way to potentially prove it wrong. Now, Popper thought that a scientific theory can never be proven true, but it can be falsified, and that any scientific theory should be rigorously scrutinized. Now, this is a standard of scientific thinking that is universally accepted. However, the opposite approach is employed in the halls of academia when it comes to evolution. Generally, evolution is taught with very simplistic examples, and barriers that cannot be explained are ignored or glossed over. Now, Charles Darwin understood the importance of skepticism in science, and in his book, Origin of Species, he provided several challenges in which his theory could be falsified. And here are some of the challenges he discussed. The fossil record. Darwin noted that the fossil record did not sustain the predictions of evolution and expressed the hope that future findings would. Irreducible complexity. Charles Darwin stated that if a system could be demonstrated that could not have been achieved through numerous successive slight modifications, his theory would be disproven. Biologic altruism. Darwin challenged skeptics to find an example in nature of a complexity of one species that existed exclusively for the benefit of another, and this could disprove evolution. And beauty for the sake of beauty. Darwin recognized that the elaborate beauty manifested in some species posed a serious challenge to evolution and could potentially overthrow it. Nevertheless, these challenges that Darwin made have been universally swept under the rug. Instead, only a few challenges are admitted, and none of these are scientific. According to modern thinking, it's impossible to falsify evolution. And if you doubt what I'm saying, ask an evolutionary biologist to provide you a way in which evolution could be falsified. You won't be given scientific challenges. Look at what's published in Wikipedia on the subject. Evolution could be falsified by many conceivable lines of evidence, such as the fossil record showing no change over time, confirmation that mutations are prevented from accumulating in a population, or observations of organisms being created supernaturally or spontaneously. Look at these. None of these are scientific challenges. These are the imagining of how things would be if life was intelligently created. And let's look at these challenges one by one. The fossil record showing no change over time. Instead of innumerable transitional forms that Darwin required, now biologists are stating that you need to prove that there are no changes in the fossil record. Otherwise, evolution should be accepted. Now, everyone knows that species change, and this is well illustrated by the selective breeding of dogs, but this is not evolution. So what they're doing is making a ridiculous extrapolation. They're saying, we can see that species change in the fossil record, therefore all life shares common descent. Now, the second point, confirmation that mutations are not inherited. They're asking you to disprove a biologic fact. So the implication is that since random mutations are inherited, that you've proven evolution. This would be like saying, I've introduced random mistakes into a computer software program. Therefore, I've just demonstrated how to create novel software. If you want to prove me wrong, prove that there are no mistakes in duplication of computer software. And now the third point, observation of organisms being created. They're not asking for evidence of the existence of an intelligent creator. They're demanding that you demonstrate the existence of God for them to literally see. In other words, if you can't show God creating something, evolution has passed yet another scientific challenge of falsification. Now, another common challenge you might hear is to demonstrate a true chimera, and that is an organism with combined parts of two different lineages. For example, Richard Dawkins argued in one of his books that the absence of feathers in bats is evidence of the lack of an intelligent designer. Now, actually, this challenge of different lineages in one organism has been met by the observation of monotremes, such as the platypus, and these have features of both reptiles and mammals. However, this is not sufficient in the eyes of many evolutionists. 
The popular website talkorigins.org demands that a chimera such as a mermaid or a centaur be necessary to falsify evolution on that basis. In other words, they demand that something like a mythologic creature, which is scientifically illogical, be identified to prove the lack of an intelligent designer. This is not a challenge to falsification. This is the imagining of how life would have been had it been intelligently designed. And these are based on an illogical philosophical worldview. There are no mermaids, so such a challenge is meaningless. Now, since Darwin, other possible ways to falsify evolution have become evidence, since we have a better understanding of the true nature of inheritance. And I'm going to present these for your consideration. Now, each one of these challenges has been met, and therefore evolution has been falsified on multiple levels. First, mathematical demonstration that the necessary mutations to result in a line of descent could not have randomly appeared. I'll refer you to an article I published which demonstrates that the eye could not have evolved through random mutations. And a summary of this article is found on my video. And take note, if you do an internet search on how to falsify evolution, nowhere will you find a challenge to disprove evolution on mathematical grounds. Next point, irreducible complexity. This refers to an organic system composed of integrated parts where each part is necessary for the overall functioning of the system. Now, an excellent example of this is single cell life, which requires multiple complex structures to function and could not be viable without all the structures present. For example, DNA requires enzymes to be formed and enzymes cannot be formed without DNA. Now, there are numerous similar chicken and egg dilemmas found in single cell life. The next point, non-functional intermediate forms. An excellent example of this is the proposed evolution of flying reptiles. Any intermediate species with a gradually evolving elongated fourth digit would have been non-functional. Now the next point, biologic altruism. A good example of biologic altruism is the existence of hundreds of medicinal plants. For example, the foxglove plant produces digitalis, which has saved the lives of thousands of heart patients. Digitalis has a direct effect on heart muscle to increase contractility. Now, there is a very simplistic explanation that is given as to how this evolved. You might be told that digitalis is poisonous to animals and therefore beneficial to the plant. But this begs the question, how did such a complex molecule happen to evolve by gradualistic changes through random mutations? Now, if this example doesn't convince you, Consider the fact that there are hundreds of plants that produce medicinal substances that benefit man in complex ways, and while the substances themselves are of no direct benefit to the plant. The existence of chemicals in plants which are beneficial to man is such a well-recognized biologic fact that it is assumed that the exploration of remote areas of the earth, like the Amazon rainforest, that these explorations will uncover new species of plants which will perhaps provide yet undiscovered pharmacologic agents, and these will aid in the treatment of incurable diseases. And then the next challenge, beauty for beauty's sake. If you've ever had the chance to visit a tropical coral reef environment, try to imagine functional reproductive advantages of the elaborate color patterns of coral reef fishes. There are none. And attempts to explain these patterns in terms of reproductive advantages are futile. And finally, functionality that exceeds need. A good example of this is the higher intelligence of man. Why is it that you can take a child from a Stone Age tribe in New Guinea and raise him in a Western culture, and his ability to understand poetry and quantum mechanics is equal to that of any other person on Earth? These abilities have no survival advantage in a primitive hunting gathering society. So how does evolution explain their existence? Now, each of these challenges is unanswered in the literature. Instead, biologists keep insisting that evolution can be falsified not by scientific challenges, but by superficial philosophy-based arguments like the absence of feathers and bats, or by imagining things that don't exist and should exist that would falsify evolution, such as the existence of centaurs or mermaids. Published challenges to falsify evolution always omit real scientific challenges, like mathematical demonstration that evolution is impossible, or the existence of irreducibly complex biologic systems. 
The publication of such a carefully selected list of potential challenges provides further evidence that evolution is not science, but is a philosophy-based worldview. Evolutionary biologists have no desire to subject their theory to true scientific challenges. Instead, they hope that you'll simply reject the spirit of true science and believe in consensus opinions. Thank you again for tuning in. Please subscribe to my channel and share this video.